Malaysia for inviting me. It's always been a pleasure and a privilege to uh, speak to all of you. And I hope my little sharing tonight would, uh, would help you to maybe visualize uh, the business a little bit better. But let me just introduce my background. I was a stockbroker for many years, uh, first in the city of London as well as in Singapore. Now, the definition of a stockbroker is someone who invests your money until it's all gone. <laughs> you should not laugh, actually this is true. Okay? And when I was in London, I used to pick up the phone and I call my clients and I put them this definition. And then they get very quiet and I say, but I am a different kind of stockbroker. <laughs> I will actually make you lots of money. Now, what I want to say is that based on my 30 over years of investment experience, Duskin is the best business you will ever find, especially for the business. You will never find anything better than this, okay? So, I will show you and I will prove it to you later on. So let me just share with you the story of how my wife and I got involved. I still remember January 2nd, 2001, I got a call from a complete stranger to attend, to come to a small presentation, much smaller than this, I think it was only 10 or 12 people. Now, just prior to January 2nd, we had just come back from a round the world holiday for one month. So we had landed in Singapore in December 28, 29. How many of you, three days after coming back from a one month holiday, a complete stranger asked you to attend a meeting and you turn up? Very few, right? Because you give excuses. But my wife and I turned up and we were told to come to an MLM talk. Um, so I later found out that MLM stands for Multi Level Marketing. <laughs> but you know why we signed up immediately? Because I realized MLM means make lots of money. <laughs> so I'm a stockholder, so I have to see that. But later on, as I do more and more new skin, I found MLM has got a different meaning. It means make life meaningful. Okay? And you will see that, okay? So anyway, we put out our hand, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit of why we decided. Because my wife, at that time, we were both in the investment world, and we had two girls, 10 and 6. So my wife said to me, what's the point of making all this money if your kids grow up wrong? Why don't I quit to be a full-time mother, and you go and make the money, and you know, I'll be a full-time mother? Of course, I had a very selfish interest because my wife is much smarter than me. It is very dangerous to keep her at home <laughs> because I would have no peace on the golf course. So at the end of the evening, when the presenter said, who wants to do the business? I put out my hand and I said, my wife will do the business. <laughs> because after all, it is a baby's business, is it not? But truthfully, even then, even though as a guy, I have never used skincare before. When I look at the products and it said toner, I said, isn't toner something you use in your bags machines? Can you put this on your face? Sir? But anyway, I realized that if it's a lady's business, it's a really good business. But a few weeks after I really understood the content, I went to my wife and said, darling, if you really love me, can you put my name in the account as well? <laughs> Because I realized we don't make a lot of money. So to cut a long story short, um, we did it part-time for about a year, and then I decided to do it full-time. So some people say to me that I have an advantage in this business because I know a lot of rich people, which is true. Rich investors, billionaires. If I said to them, I have a good business idea, they will come immediately. But do you think they would agree to do multi-level marketing? No way! So in fact, for me to do the business, it is very, very difficult. So I want to tell you straight away, I have no advantage in this business. It's much more difficult for me than you think. So please, do not give any excuses to your friend, oh, I can't do this business because I'm a man. I can't do this business because I have no friends. Not true. Not true at all. Okay, so remember that. Then remember that. Now, so a little bit of a story of myself. 
That was me as a young boy. I grew up very poor, eight of us lived in a one bedroom flat with one toilet. So I'm staying at uh, this hotel. I have a lifelong habit. Whenever I go into any hotel, I always check out the toilet first and then check the bed. Because the toilet has to be comfortable. I mean, what do you expect? Eight people sharing one toilet, you want to have your own toilet right after that. So, so my personal heroes are my mom and dad. Because even though they were not very well educated, they did whatever they could to put food on the table to pay for school fees. And I still remember as a young boy, there were times when mom and dad would be whispering at night, how are we going to find money to pay next week's school fees? And they were borrowing money. In fact, in those days, I remember they were borrowing rice from the neighbor. But somehow, we made it. But anyway, during my childhood, one of the jobs that my mom did to pay the bills was work as a domestic for the British Armed Forces in Singapore at that time. And it was in a big house like this. And I would go along, and as a little boy, probably about three or four years old, and I would run around the house, and I'll say to my mom, Mom, when I grow up, I want to have a house like that, so that we can enjoy our life. What did mom say? It's not possible, son, because these are rich people, they have lots of money, we are very poor, we don't have money even for rice. So what was my next question? Mom, how can I get rich and make lots of money? What do you think mom said? What do you say? Study hard. <laughs> right? Study hard. So I studied hard. I got a scholarship to the London School of Economics. And at this point, I want to tell you, and I read somewhere in the book, that if you're truly lucky in life, you will have two big opportunities that you can capitalize on. Now, at this point, I want you to turn to the person who brought you tonight and thank the person. Please thank the person first. Thank you very much. You, you don't know why you're thanking the person, but you're still thanking anyway, right? Very good. At least you have two hands up and you're so very quarrelous. Okay, why are you thanking the person? Because this person cares enough for you to bring you here. This person is giving you an incredible piece of luck. It's called Nisqin. So let me tell you, I'm luckier than most because I've had three pieces of big luck. The first one was obviously getting a scholarship to go to the London School of Economics. And my first boss was Mr. Lee Sien Lung, current Prime Minister of Singapore. So I learned a lot from him as a young man. And at the age of 28, I submitted my resignation. And he said, why? Why are you leaving us? He said, I'm not going to persuade you from leaving. He said, I know you want to be silent on what you want to do. Nobody will stop you. But can you tell me, why would you give up such a nice position in a ministry like this? So I said, two reasons. The first one is my girlfriend at the time gave me this challenge. If you want to marry me, you have to get a job in London. So once I got an offer in London to go to stop me, she had to marry me. Okay, so the first reason was for love. Okay? So love really can conquer all. <laughs> and he said, what was the second reason? So I said, I was born poor. It's not my fault. But if someone gave you an opportunity to get rich, and you don't take it, and you die poor, it is your bloody fault. Yes or no? Yes. So do you want to be poor, or do you want to be rich? rich. Of course you want to be rich. So this was my first two pieces of luck. I was in the stock market at the right time for a good 15 years. Um, it was golden. All the conditions were right, and we made, we made good money. What was my third piece of luck? Well, you really guess it. It's new skin. Now, how is this third piece of luck different from the first two? When you are in the job, no matter how good your job is or a business, you have to be a champion every day, every week, every month, every year. Is that possible? Not possible. Because someday you'll be tired, someday you can't do it, someday your business will be obsolete. What I like about New Skin, I only have to succeed one time. Work hard for three years, five years, whatever, and enjoy thereafter. I think this is much better than fighting every day, fighting every year, fighting every 10 years, don't you think? Yes. Okay, so again, be grateful to the person who brought you because this is an incredible piece of luck. I hate to say this, but it is truly once in a lifetime opportunity. You will never find something like this ever again. So 
because of my success in stock I was able to build my own house and make not only my dream come true, but my mom's dream come true. But I show you this, not to tell you how clever or how successful I am, but really to drive home this point. Don't think poverty, think abundance. It doesn't matter where your starting point is. You may be born poor, you may not have much education, maybe your health is not so good, your job prospects are not so good, but there is always a way. If you continue to think poor, you will be poor. And I always say, if your bank account is poor, it's okay. But if your mindset is poor, you will die poor. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, so please, don't think poor, think rich. The Singapore newspaper was very curious why someone of my background would be doing a business like this. So they interviewed me, this is about four years ago. So I told them, Making money is important, but having the health, having the time, and having the peace of mind to enjoy life with the loved ones is even more important. I think after a while, we forget why we are working so hard. We think we are doing, we are sacrificing for our family. Oh, before you know it, the kids have grown up, right? So, we do skin. I was, first, let's talk about my health. This was me almost 10 years ago, uh, before the first round of our TRA. For those new friends of ours, our latest one is called TRA. And in the first set, the first program we had was called TRA, the right approach, okay? but now it's even better. So this was me before TRA, and even then, I was doing a lot of exercise, but it was still like this. Three months later, this is how I look, okay? Uh, I lost about 8 kilos, but more importantly, my waistline was now smaller than when I got married at 28. <laughs> that means my waistline went back 20 years in 3 months. Do you think it's worth it? Yeah. It's worth it, right? So I really stopped uh, taking the TR, uh, uh, TR90 products. The next picture is a picture taken about 6 months ago. Okay. Now, you remember Glenn? Glenn was talking about from the 40s, from your 40s onward, you start to lose muscle mass. I don't know what he said, 1% or 2% every year. In fact, it's incredibly difficult. The picture here uh, was when I was 48, I'm 57 now. Okay. So, to be able to put on muscle from 48 onwards to be unheard of, correct? But because of age of product, I'm able to have you and you all over again. Uh, this is my wife, and this is how she looks. Okay. She's the same age as me. So, health. Definitely, and you, the scheme will give you. Uh, this is a uh, wise fan. I was one of the best subjects. You can see, I'm, I'm going to just share with you. Uh, this was over like maybe three weeks, two, three weeks. There are three benefits of wise fan that I can personally share. The first one, within like two, three weeks, you could see your skin tone improve, much younger skin, much tighter. The second one was that um, I have a prostate enlargement issue. Uh, apparently, 50% of men above 50 have prostate enlargement. Okay, for those of you who don't have this problem or for the ladies, in simple terms, you have you can't control your bladder, you have to wake up at night, very irritating. Um, medication, it was getting better, but after I took my span, I didn't have to wake up at night. My bladder control was better. Only after like four weeks, okay? So I'm not making any medical claims. But I'm saying you cannot be a coincidence. Okay? So that was the second benefit. The third benefit, because of all the sports I play, I really had two operations on my knees, both of torn meniscus. Now the interesting thing is my left knee was operated on before I spent. After the operation, I tried to go back and run. It still hurt, so I didn't run so much. I didn't cycle in the gym. My right knee was operated about six months after I started my spending. This time it was different. 
after I went back to run, no pain at all. Okay, isn't it incredible? So, how do you explain it? Again, I'm not making a medical claim, but I think it cannot be a coincidence. It cannot be a coincidence. Um, so, I managed to spend time with, with my girls. Now, how many of you here are parents? How many of you here are parents? Okay, do you think this kind of moment you would love to have time with your, with your children? Would you? What value do you put on it? You know what's the value? Priceless. Because this time will never come again. So I was able to spend time with my girls uh, and when they were growing up. And this was a picture that I took. Uh, this is my elder girl. She, this was about maybe three years, three, four years ago. She graduated from uh, Cambridge Law School. Okay? And this is, uh, sorry, this, is, uh, this is my mom. And obviously my mom was very proud and took her on a holiday and so on and so forth. And this is a picture of my uh, other daughter. She's uh, just finished her second year in Cambridge. Now, why do I show you these pictures? As a responsible parent, from the time my girls were born, I had put money aside for their overseas education. Um, it's not a small amount, but so by the time the first one was ready to go, I, there was enough money. But I was able to put that aside because both my wife and I, we made good money in the stock market. How about ordinary people who don't have the chance? Very hard. But with this income, without touching our savings, we are able to put them in Cambridge University. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> does, it, does it make life meaningful for your family? Is it nice not to have touched your savings and use the income coming to every month? And of course, my mom is so proud as a, as a grandmother as well. Um, and the freedom to travel. This is a picture taken um, last year, last year on our travel. And in total, I actually calculated, uh, we traveled in total eight weeks. I never traveled eight weeks before ever in my life. Now, today, you know about Brexit and all of the volatilities causing the financial markets. When I was a stockbroker, whenever I travel, I had to carry a lot of handbooks. You can never sleep properly because of all the quality that you have offered. But with this skin, I have complete peace of mind. So I get my health back, I have my money freedom, I have my time freedom. Um, and this is a picture that we took on uh, Singapore Airlines by coming back from the global convention. Now, this is a, a so I surprised my wife with a cake on our anniversary. So, this is an advice, friendly advice to all the men. Who, who are married or about to get married, there are two dates you must always remember. <laughs> your wife's birthday and your anniversary. <laughs> because the women say, my wife, my darling. Not true. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. <laughs> they don't need it, okay? <laughs> so we please don't forget. So anyway, we celebrate our anniversary up in the sky. And, um, I posted my wife, I said, darling, thank you for bringing up two lovely daughters. All that is good in them is because of you. All that is not so good, you can blame me. <laughs> then uh, we both posted new skin. I said, said, thank you, new skin, so much. If not for new skin, we cannot have this kind of life. And finally, my wife uh, posted me and said, thank you for being such a stubborn man. When people tell you to see cannot be done, you still persist. Okay? So this is one of So please don't blame your sponsor, your friend, or be so stubborn. Keep inviting you, okay? He or she means well, okay? I hope you really see that stubbornness is a, is a good point when it comes to doing this skin. Now, so why do I share all these stories with you? I in my line of work, I have worked with very successful people in, in my business and so on and so forth. And I noticed there were some common uh, principles of success. Now, would you like to know? Yes. Would you like to know? Okay. So I noticed, I noticed that there were three things that were, they were in, in line. The first one, all these successful people back the right trend. 
So obviously, I bet the right trend is stock booking at that time. Next, the right vehicle and the right timing. So let me put it to you this way. There are three very big trends today. The first one is called health and youth preservation. The second one is called technology. That means whether you like it or not, technology is going to be here. If your firm is having technology that is behind other people, you will be close. Remember a company called Kodak? Remember a company called Nokia? You get the point. And the third trend is sharing economy or social media. How many of us take pictures and then we can share? Uh, you've heard of a company like Uber. You've heard of companies like Facebook. Okay, so let me repeat. Three big trends. Health and youth preservation, technology, and social, econ social media and sharing economy. Why do I bring this up? Because if your company or the business you're in has got one of the three, you do very well. Do you know Lucy has all three? Yes. Do you know Lucy has all three? What do you plan to talk about? Age, law, technology. Alright? Social media. Is it very complicated when you just take some pictures to shoot a video tonight? You can share straight away with your friends. No need to be very expensive or no need to be very complicated. Now, right vehicle. All along, those of us uh, were brought up to believe that the university education, once you get that, you're secure. True or not true? Okay. Maybe true for my time, because when I went to university, in my group, maybe 10% of the people go to university. Today in Singapore, it's about 50%. Do you know that by the year 2020, there will be 200 million graduates in China alone? Is that scary? So, do we still want to persist on our vehicle for most of us, earning a linear, limited income, uncertain at best? Or do you want to go for a leverage income, passive, scalable, consistent, and has the longevity. And lastly, right timing. You know, economic cycles occur every seven to eight years. When was the last recession? 2008, Lehman. What year are we? 2016, eight years later. It's about right. And I think this recession will be quite a long and nasty one. So I tell everyone to get prepared, okay? Do not wait. Do not think that just because your job is safe today, it will be safe tomorrow. It cannot be. Then, and the other thing is, are you getting any younger? Are you getting any younger? No. The other day in Singapore, I gave a talk like this, and I just said one thing. I said, I just heard from one of my friends in the IT industry that the average age of IT people is 30. You know, immediately that night, there was one gentleman He's 50 years old, he's been trained from IT. He said he's absolutely right. He signed straight away to the business. He saw the light. So, ladies and gentlemen and friends, please think about it. Are you on the right track, the right vehicle, or the right timing? Or all three are wrong with you? Usually, for most people, all three are against them. Now, there was a very famous book by this guy called Andy Grove from Intel. You know Intel? Uh, all our computers, all our handphones use intelligence. And he wrote a very famous book called Only the Paranoid Will Survive. Okay? Why did he say that? You only have to look at the example of Kodak. Do you know that Kodak invented the digital camera? But subsequently he sold the rights to Apple, and do you know the rest is history? I think and I observe that many of us are not paranoid enough. We never think that things will go wrong. We always think the bad things only happen to someone. We come home and we tell our wife, so you know, you remember that Mr. A that we met, oh, you know, poor thing, you know, he got retrenched and his kids are very young. And then what about Miss B? She has just got health problems and all the savings are gone. Unexpected things always happen at unexpected times. Now, one of the things I learned. Uh, uh, working in the Singapore government is always aim for the stars, but always prepare for the worst. I'm not trying to be negative, but we can be, have the highest hope, 
but we have to be more for the things that go wrong. All right? So, are you paranoid enough? What is the stance of our company? I love this company. You know why? First, we are very confident of our technology. We are very confident of our place. We are very confident of our age job. But we are not complacent. You know what Truman Han, our CEO, said? Our value system is to innovate, innovate, innovate like mad so that nobody can catch us. Now, you already know that age law really puts us 30 years ahead of everyone else. With all these new products coming out, maybe we'll be 50 years ahead, I don't know, maybe even further. Don't you want to be partnered with a company that is paranoid, confident, but also paranoid? It seems to be contradictory, right? But it's not. All the best companies in the world have to be paranoid about being caught by the competition. So if you are not paranoid enough in your individual life, I hear this so often, I think I have enough money. Huh? If I don't want to have a luxurious lifestyle, it should be okay. You really think so? I don't think so. So only the paranoid will survive. So this slide actually originally I had Jack Ma's picture, but I think because of copyright, you have to take out Jack Ma's picture. You all know who Jack Ma is, right? Okay, imagine this picture, okay? So Jack Ma said, why many ordinary people will lose out on big opportunity? He said the first one, can't get, can't see. What do you see tonight after Glenn has spoken, after the two ladies have shared, and after what I've shared, after what your friend has shared? Do you still think it's a skincare business? Do you still think we're selling some weight management product, mostly done by ladies, or it's some multi level marketing plan? That means you still can't see it, just like you still see Starbucks as a coffee business. <laughs> you can't see it. Next, look down, Kanuchi. You think, how come this guy, you know, ex stock broker, maybe he lost a lot of money in the stock market? How come he's doing that more, you know? <laughs> he got nothing better to do? Well, I told my friends, I do a demo not to sell one bottle of shampoo or one toner or one skincare. Eventually, my organization will be moving hundreds and thousands of bottles. Is that a real business? Is that worth doing? Of course. But because you look down on the process, because you think you went to the top university, because you think you wear a nice tie, because you think you have a nice tie, then you look down. Don't look down. Look carefully. Yeah. The next one, don't understand. Okay, tonight, maybe some of the things are a little bit complex, but I only ask you to bring back one thing tonight, okay? If you understand one thing, what separates the rich from the poor? The one be rich or poor, right? Now, why, why do we have this expression? The rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. Is it true? It's true. In fact, the middle class is getting poorer. Let me tell you the difference between the rich and the poor, but before I tell you that, do you know what poor stands for? P-O-O-R. Passing over opportunity repeatedly. <laughs> R-I-C-H, residual income and go home or go on holiday any time. <laughs> Isn't it true? Yes. Okay. What separates the rich from the poor? Very simple one word. You only need to understand this one word. If you understand this one word, you understood the whole presentation and whatever we share. The word is called leverage. Leverage. If you don't have leverage in your life, you will always be poor. Let me give you an example. Why is the founder of Starbucks a multi multi billionaire? He only sells coffee. Right? Coffee is a new one. I mean, uh, $6 sing, I don't know what it's 10 or 12 ringgit here. But how many cups of coffee does he sell a day? A lot, right? Okay? Um, what about Mr. Microsoft, Mr. Bill Gates? How many of the windows does he sell all the time? A lot. Okay? Uh, how about Mr. Zuckerberg of Facebook? He sells a lot of advertisement. How about Mr. Jack Ma himself? He sells a lot. So if you don't have leverage in your life, you will always be chasing and chasing and falling behind. And finally, too slow. Like Chi. 
You think it's a good idea? Yeah, let me think about it. Let me think, think, think. Never do one. It will never do one. And, and that's why I told my wife, if you think it's worth it, just do it. Because anything you want to do in your life, just ask yourself two questions. What is the risk of doing? Okay, if you do, it doesn't work, but you become more handsome, your skin is better, your bladder is stronger. <laughs> You become slimmer, but the second part of the question is more important. What is the risk of not doing? You know, the second question scares me more than any other. If my wife and I had not seen it, looked down on it, don't understand, too slow to act, today I won't have new skin. My tummy will be bigger, my bladder will be weaker. I will have less hair, I will be digging into my savings, I won't enjoy life as much. So, think about what you're giving up if you walk away without really understanding it. Now, I'm going to leave you with three questions. This is something I learned from my first boss, Mr. Lee Seno. He said, whatever issues you want to make a decision to do or not to do, just frame it in the three to five key questions. So, what are the key questions? I mean, actually, you have a lot of questions, but let me suggest to you there are only three key questions. The first question is Is new skin for real? Is it for real? I can show you, I can prove to you 32 years, 54 countries, billions of dollars of turnover. A shop, we say it's good, not just we say, but Discovery Channel. A lot of our independent researchers say Is new skin for real? If it's not real, I cannot be standing in front of you. I cannot have sent my two girls to Cambridge and do all those things in the products of work. No way. What kind of life do I want? So a lot of people say, I think I should be okay. My boss quite likes me. If I don't spend too much money, it should be okay. Why would you settle for that when you can have much more? Why do you want to age like your peers when you can age younger? Why do you want to have less money when you can have more money? The other day, I was with my schoolmates, uh, same year, we were sitting down having lunch, then one of the ladies came, who was going to talk business with one of my friends, so he got up, he introduced another lady, when she shook my hand straight away, she said, How come you look younger than the rest? Would you like that kind of life? Where you can travel, where you're young, where you can, I still play soccer every week. My wife doesn't like me to play, but I still do that, okay? Because of age law. And I never imagined at 57, I can still do all these things. Isn't that amazing? So this is a life we've chosen. I didn't know it was possible. But with new skin, it is. Okay? So this is a life that we can have. And can I succeed? This is a very common question. And the way I answer it is very simple. Around the world, there is a taxi driver that I know personally from Japan. He is a $20 million circle member, taxi driver. At the same time, there are PhDs who are also $20 million circle member. So think about it. If a taxi driver can make it with hardly any education, a PhD with so much education can make it, or schooling can make it, surely you and I are somewhere in between. Yes or no? Yes. So if they can do it, why can't we do it? In your team, you have very good leaders, they will show you how to do it. Now, at the end of the day, I think you have to decide what kind of response, how you respond to tonight will determine whether you're a winner or a loser in life. What do the losers say about losing? Say, yeah, it may be possible, but it's too difficult. What do the winners say? Mm, it may be difficult, but it's possible, and the hard work will be so worthwhile. The losers say they see the pain, they see the rejections. The winners say we see the game. The losers see problems, the winners see possibilities. The losers say let it happen. If it happens, it happens. The winners say I'm going to make it happen. So you decide whether you're going to be a loser or you're going to be a winner. Do you tell your kids to be losers or winners? Winners. Then you better be him like a winner because your kids will learn from you. Okay? So please remember this. And I want to end with this. This was a 
picture we took uh, in uh, Peterborough. We were there to visit one of our UK airlines, and this was taken in a Greyhound city, you know, you know Greyhound with a grey slot. And um, so my wife and I didn't know anything about Greyhound, so we just spun the wheel, and um, the wheel pointed to a club. So my wife was hesitating. I don't know anything about this store. I don't know whether to bet or not. So you probably have this feeling about this. I need to do more research, right? But the race was about to start in five minutes, and we didn't have time. So I said, what's the name of the dog? The name of the dog was called Desperate Dan. <laughs> and I said, I like the name because I'm also a very desperate person. When I do something, I'm very desperate. So I said, let's put it up. I said, I don't know where to go. I said, let's find a little bit of that. And we did. And guess what? We won. Okay, actually it was a gamble, there were six dots. In all likelihood, we would have lost, right? Life is a gamble. But the point of it was I told my wife, your instincts told you to go for it, go for it. But in this game, what do your instincts have? To go for it, not go for it, does it make sense? I will keep it easy for you. I will tell you, this game is a sure win business. If you don't go for it, you will regret it. is not a gamble. It's sure win. Then you show it. And I said this at the beginning of doing this game, not after I succeeded. Okay, so if anything else, just remember it's a sure win business. If you don't take it, you look back at what I said, I hope you won't be right. And really, I think life is about living life 100%. After I did this presentation a week ago in Singapore. A lot of the people who came to the people, they asked a few key questions, a few common questions, which I'm sure some of you will ask. Some of the questions, one of the questions they asked of the people who got them say, are you sure or not? This kind of life can really achieve or not? Are you sure or not? Are you sure or not? And even though you have not yet made it, even though you just started, what do you say? It's a sure win business. Okay, and I also have this motto, live life 100%. Do not shock change yourself. You are very lucky to have this kid. Whether you turn out to be the luckiest person alive or the unluckiest person depends on what you do with the opportunity you've been shown. Thank you very much tonight.